So let's just put it into perspective. We've got a GDP scenario that is playing out far better for 2012 than initially anticipated. And it seems that this might actually offset the concerns of that 50% petrol price increase. Do you think that it is going to have a positive effect all round, given the fact that when you start seeing energy prices rising to this extent, it obviously is going to have an effect on consumption. In fact, we see demand destruction in these types of scenarios. All right, there are two things. On the growth side, we're expecting uh, growth to be tempered by the higher uh, production costs as well as distribution costs on the back of this higher fuel price, or the petrol price in particular. So we're looking at growth being tempered, coming down to around 6.8% from 7.2% last year. However, the positive news, of course, uh, what we're all expecting is the outcome of the rebasing of the national accounts that is expected to result in an upward revision of GDP. Let's also touch on the infrastructure spend because this is going to take a large mm. chunk out of the budget for 2012. 20% 20 of the budget is going to be spent on infrastructure. This is good news because this ultimately is going to start um, ensuring that there is oil in the machine. We're going to see job creation in this regard as well. Um, just to correct you there, 20% uh, of the expenditure will be going towards security. Actually, our concern is that it will crowd out what would have gone towards infrastructure. If you actually look at the distribution of expenditure to the critical sectors, which take up half of the budget, security has been given a bigger allocation than that of power, healthcare, and education. So what is the number for the infrastructure spend news, then, uh, would you say? I mean, what is the number that we'd look at? with regards to the budget allocation for infrastructure, given the fact that, as you mentioned, security accounts for 20%. Um, well, together, the three sectors I mentioned to you, the social sectors of healthcare, education, if we're looking at power, it includes transport. We're talking about between um, about 10% of the budget going towards that, those particular items. However, given the redeployment of the um, half of the subsidy money that has, of course, uh, now be going, going towards other expenditure. We're also expecting that to be uh, directed towards infrastructure spend, so that's a big plus. Yeah. But security, is, of course, is our big concern in terms of crowding out what could have gone to infrastructure. Uh, do you think that that is warranted? I mean, you look at the unemployment rate from 2006 to 2011, uh, that has doubled to around 24%. Mm -hmm. It is a very big concern. Uh, I suppose gov Correct. what government is also looking at here is ensuring that no matter what they spend money on, that it is going to have a spin-off effect on the jobs scenario. Correct. What we've seen over the past five years at least is essentially jobless growth. So you've seen the strong growth rate accelerating in the 7 to 8 percent region. However, as you rightly said, unemployment has increased. The challenge the government has is, is investing in ventures that will uh, create jobs, so public work programs. What's also notable from our research is that the spread of unemployment uh, seems to be regional. So the northern parts of Nigeria seems to have a higher incidence of unemployment than the south. At Lagos, for instance, only at 8%. And if you go further north, you get to rates of over 30% in terms of unemployment. So the challenge for them is actually to target investment in northern uh, Nigeria. And indirectly, that could also ease the, the insecurity issue that we have in the northern part yeah. of the country. With regards to the subsidy, the fuel subsidy, we know that that has created quite a bit of havoc uh, and clearly mm -hmm. uh, it makes a lot of sense given the fact that consumers and corporates are quite upset about this. Uh, we're starting to see a slightly softer environment playing out, but uh, of course government took this very difficult step given the fact that it would have an impact on uh, government's expenditure going forward. Are we looking at a far better balance sheet for the Nigerian government going forward? We think it's positive. We think it reduces the arbitrage opportunities uh, that were available to the oil marketers. So we're expecting less pressure on the forex reserves as a result of a reduction in the oil import bill. Of course, it's due to the arbitrage opportunities, not necessarily because they're importing a low volume of uh, refined petrol. So we think there's upside. Uh, if you look at what's happened in January, we've already also uh, seen a steady improvement in the FX position. If we continue to see FX improve at the current rate, then we're in for a better year than we had last year for the current account. Okay, so let's also just touch on the GDP scenario uh, with regards mm -hmm. to the contribution of each sector. Uh, we're looking at crop production accounting for around 36%, wholesale and retail trade 19%. Crude and petro petroleum around 15%, but that accounts for the mm. biggest export as well. Are we going to see a far more uh, better mix going forward with regards to uh, economic activity relative to what we see on the import-export side? 
In terms of the structure of the economy, so you're talking about the real economy and GDP on the production side, we're expecting actually a change in that following the rebasing. So for instance, the agriculture sector, we don't expect to be as big. We expect it to drop it towards the 30s region, whereas it's come from around 40. We expect the services the sector to contribute more. What's interesting about the oil and gas sector, despite its contribution of 15% there last year, it hasn't contributed much to growth at all over the past couple of years. So the challenge there is to provide uh, greater impetus into uh, the oil and gas sector going forward because it can contribute so much more to growth. For now, what we're seeing is growth being driven by the non-oil sector.